first three to five days is only in a place they call reception. That's the setup. All of a sudden, these these school buses show up. They call them bluebirds, but they're they're basically right, school, school buses. buses. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to grab their crap as quickly as possible, and then there's people in funny hats yelling at you, and I'm like, what the hell just happened? I thought I was in basic. No, you weren't in basic, and that time doesn't count against your basic training time. It's like prison. It's like when you, <laughs> it's like when you get sentenced and they just sentence you to county first for the first five days, and then you get sent to a federal prison. That's exactly how it was in basic. You know, I got the first five days in reception, and then you got the real stuff and actually i was kind of glad to get there because at least you get to sleep a little bit and then you're getting trained to do something because at reception there was really nothing going on after a while it was it was just nothing after you went through all the basic right. stuff there was nothing left to do they were just it, it it occurs to me now that they were just you know they were biding time until it was your time to go everything right. was on the schedule so Got to kind of follow everybody in. Yes. And yes. it's kind of there in a holding pattern. Yes. And yes. then it's singing to the shit. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But even still, it was a, that experience was, it was, compared to what I've been used to, it was, it was kind of good. I, I think I kind of needed that, you know, got myself into some great shape, right. you know, for one, you know, the discipline was also great. Uh, I learned a little bit about leadership, you know, in terms of from their point of view, how they were leading us to do all these right. things. I did some things in basic that I never thought I'd be able to do. Run five miles, no. Mm -hmm. No. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do 80 push-ups, mm -hmm. no. Right. No, we weren't, no. <laughs> those things weren't. Right. Th that wasn't something I was looking forward to, but, you know, those are just some of the things that I right. learned. So, it was, you know, basic was... Uh, it's, it started off a little rough, but it was right. a good experience. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I, I think at least in terms of that point, it, it got a little strange after that. So. Right. So, uh, what did you do in the army? What, what did I, you had to do? Uh, my MOS or my job was a 31 uniform. I was a communications person. I ran wire as well as work with radios. So I spent a lot of time in the field, and by the field, I mean we, you know, we spent a lot of time camping. You're in the woods. Yes, I right. was in the woods a lot. <laughs> if there were woods, right. in, in Korea there were no woods. It was more like a a, a, a junk heap, you know. Right. But we were out there all the time. So. So Korea, did you spend any time near the DMZ? I did. I did. And what was that like? The DMZ was strange for somebody who's never dealt with a situation like that. When you first go into a situation where it's not war, but ceasefire, yeah, a ceasefire, right. correct. It's it's not war, but it's it's technically war. Right. You you deal with some situations. I remember driving a Humvee for my commander, uh -huh. and we got about halfway across this bridge, and he's like, "Hey." Stop here for a second. I'm like, all right, cool. And I stopped and looked over and I was like, this is pretty cool. He was like, don't worry about it. This bridge is lined with mines. Yeah, that was my look too. <laughs> okay. He was like, don't worry about it. Even if the bridge was to blow up and you were to survive, there's mines down in the river too, so don't even worry about it. And I was just like, whoa. It, it wow. occurred to me. Right. At that point, wow, we're in that kind of situation. I really uh -huh. have to put my mindset into it. Right. They have a place over there called the One Hole Golf Course. And all you can do is putt on it because if you try to drive your ball, it's going to hit it's going to hit a mine somewhere and it's going to blow up so it's not, you know. Oh wow. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I was near the DMZ. Actually, they've got a funny story if you guys would like to hear it. Yes, absolutely. In the DMZ, there's space. There's a good 20 feet of space. Evidently, at one point, uh, there was a tree blocking the view between the different sets of soldiers, between right. U.S., Korean, North Korean. <coughs> what ended up happening is they decided, you know, to send a delegation from each party to go cut down this tree. Well, the North Koreans went Looney Tune during that particular uh, encounter, encounter, okay. and. Uh, Instead of cutting down the tree, they start cutting down the people over there. 
So they were like, okay, fine, no problem. Y'all got away with that one. Right. The U.S. Army, as well as the South Koreans, what they decided to do was put everybody on alert. They put the whole Second Fleet on alert, the whole theater on alert right. for that area. Uh -huh. And they went out and they took a delegation of their own and cut down the tree and dared them to send anybody over there to start some crap. <laughs> <laughs> it was that kind of thing, you know. <laughs> the tree was cut down. There were no more lives lost. But I thought that was a very, right. very interesting story. Like, well, right. they went that far. Like, we got to set the whole theater on alert. Right. Like, everybody in this country and anybody around it just to cut a tree down. Yeah, that's war. Sometimes you got to set the tone for your opponents because otherwise they're going to think they can just run over you. So, well, well yeah, I considering the uh, that those soldiers consider who you're dealing with over there. Too, uh, yeah, right? correct, correct, right. right. Yeah, so that was yeah that was interesting being over there. Okay, so how much time did you spend in North Korea? I I'm spent, sorry, South Korea. Uh, I spent 364 days in South Korea, uh, about eight hours in North Korea. That's only because we went on a tour up there and I was able to get on the other side. So. Oh, so you actually stepped foot in North Korea? I did. Wow. I, I stepped foot in North Korea by about three feet. As a matter of fact, my platoon sergeant actually farted in North Korea. <laughs> nice. Yes, I thought that was great. Okay. So, yeah. um, yeah, that's so, uh...